Hi, welcome to LB0 Fox India Norwegian Adventures. I'm working LB0 Fox India. And for a good while now, this has been my go to LoRa APRS tracker. It's a Liligo T deck, and it's an amazing device, uh, to put it simply. It has a large screen, um, it has a keyboard for messaging, um, it's got a nice form factor to hold in your hand, but it's a little bit big, it's a little bit clumsy, um, it's not the ideal tracker to just clip on the side of a backpack or in your uh, coat pocket or something when moving around and, and actually doing stuff. It's a great tracker at home, but it's not necessarily a great portable tracker in the sense of some is on the air, parks on the air and such. So I've been looking for something and I've had the Liligo T-Beam. Um, I've never been really happy with the Liligo T-Beam. And then I started looking around and I saw my good buddy, Bob, LB5JJ. He had a video on the Haltech wireless tracker. And first of all, thanks to AliExpress for sending me the Haltech wireless tracker. It's in this case, we're gonna take a closer look at this in just a little while. But first, if you haven't heard about AliExpress, it's an online marketplace where you can get pretty much anything. And by anything, I mean anything. Anything from the cheap stuff to the expensive stuff, from the low quality stuff to the high quality stuff, anything. And I use AliExpress for ham radio gear or things I wanna try out in the hobby because, there's a good selection and prices are relatively good, at least for the Chinese stuff. Um, I wouldn't buy a Yesu off of AliExpress, but I most certainly <laughs> am willing to get a Haltech wireless tracker from AliExpress. So um, what we're gonna do today, we're gonna take a quick look at the wireless tracker itself. We're gonna open it up, see what's inside this case. It's a 3D printed case. I found that over on printables. I can't remember who made it, but I'll put an overlay up here on screen so you can see the place. And I'll also put a link to this device down below. And there'll be some discount codes coming over and pointing on screen while you look at the screen is hard uh, over here sometime during the video. What do you say? How about we get over to the workbench, we open this little thingy up and we see what it looks like on the inside and what I've used to make this happen. Also take a look at this 3D printed case. And if you've been following this channel for a while, you probably know that my workbench is never clean, but here's the tracker in the case and I'm gonna turn it on here now. I just hope that the display is the right way up. It's not, so I'm gonna turn this around. Um, for us who have eyes of a certain age, reading these displays can be a challenge, but this is for me just going to work as a tracker. So I'm not too worried about that. Um, there's a couple of buttons here, um, standard to in on these devices to navigate. This is of course running the CA2RXU firmware by Ricardo Gusman. And uh, I got a video on how to flash and set up your LoRa devices. Uh, but if you search for LoRa APRS firmware, you're gonna find it. And I'm also gonna put a link down in the description for this. But what do you say? Um, how about we open this case and look at the individual parts? And I'm actually gonna take this lanyard off because that's just simply gonna be in the way. That's just a simple way for me in order to put this on a backpack. I've also done some testing with this and not surprisingly, it performs pretty much like any other um, LoRa device. Uh, it's pretty much the same chipset in all of these. So uh, there's not gonna be huge differences. Um, the differences are gonna be uh, on, let's see if we can turn this off, on the GPS chipset. Um, and that's one of the reasons I went for this because the GPS chip is really good. It gets a GPS fix really fast. Um, while the T-Beam, which has, a, first of all, a strange form factor, and secondly, um, has a poor GPS chip and takes a lot of time to get GPS fix. And when using these devices, you want it to get a GPS fix relatively fast. So let's open it up. Got a couple of M3 screws here. Um, so we're just gonna unscrew this. And this case has three parts. And the reason I'm using uh, flathead screws is 
just because that was what I had available. I'm running low on hardware and uh, well, this is what I had. And um, this is of course battery powered and uh, I just gotta say that I have some batteries on the way from China. Um, I didn't want to wait for those, so I do have do have an improvised solution. But let's speed this up again and um, take a look at the inside when we get there. So the case has three parts here. It has the top part, which contains the Heltec board here. Let's just, let's see if we can undo this and see what that looks like. So you can see the Heltec wireless tracker board here. This just pops into a groove in this case. Let's put it back before we take a look at the rest of the stuff here. And we, of course, need to slide the USB-C port in. And that's also one of the factors which makes me like this board a whole lot more than the Lilligo T-Beam. And that's the fact that it has USB-C. Uh, you have a battery connector here. You have an antenna connector here. You even have a connector for an external GPS antenna, should you need one. I don't really see why I should need one because... Let's pop this out again. and take a look at the GPS antenna. There's a relatively hefty GPS antenna on the board here. But now let's uh, put it back together. Then we have the center part here. Um, just adds a little bit of flair to the case, I think. And um, also, um, also gives it a little bit of a uh, hole here to put a lanyard through. And then we have the battery here and as you probably can see here, this battery says Canon or Anon, but that's hidden between <laughs> behind the tape. Uh, because I had a Canon battery to spare, and I figured this is 3.7 volts and it's right voltage. So um, while I'm waiting for the correct battery, and batteries take a while to ship from abroad, I could just use this. This is an old battery and it will need to be replaced. It doesn't hold the charge pretty well. This battery is just, I've used a little bit of double-sided tape here, and then I've used just some sponge packing material here uh, just to give it a press fit here. Nothing too big here. So let's uh, put the case back together and then start thinking about, or talking about what I think about this tracker and, uh, and actually uh, if you should get one or not. And as usual in ham radio, you know the answer, it depends, but what we're gonna talk about why it depends and uh, what you should think about. I'm just gonna get the screws in here a little bit before starting to assemble this. So I actually know where to put the different parts and I can make them just slide in a little bit better. It also helps to have all the holes aligned somewhat when putting three parts together like this. And what you need to be a little bit careful about is just make sure you, that you don't pinch any of these power cables. They are not strong enough that they'll survive uh, getting pinched in this. You will at some point, if you do that, get a broken cable. Like this, and then it's just a matter of tightening the screws. And just make sure you don't over tighten these screws because you're screwing into plastic. Let's get this turned on. And let's just put the uh, T-Deck beside it. You can see the difference in size here. Um, 
T-Deck S, a lot larger. This is a lot easier just to clip to a backpack or your coat, your pants, or anything went out uh, and want to do LoRa APRS. So, <clears throat> shortly, um, just taking a look at these. Um, both of these devices have their use. And let's get back to the studio and we'll talk about who this device is for and if you should get one or not. The Heltec wireless tracker and this 3D printed case. Should you get one? I, I don't mean the 3D printed case. Um, you could either design one or make one yourself or find any of the readily available cases on wherever you get your 3D printed designs. But at the t time of recording, and I just got to check my phone, this little Heltec wireless tracker board is $27 approximately over on AliExpress. And that's not a bad deal for something that can be made into a small tracker. Besides that, you'll, you're you gonna need a battery. Um, I am not gonna advise you on batteries. What I'm gonna say is that if you're gonna do something with batteries, please, please know what you're doing and please be a little bit careful. Uh, batteries have the potential to actually create something really bad, such as a fire or an explosion. So if you work on batteries, at least do some research uh, ahead of time. But back to this one, for me, it suits my need. This is the compact tracker, but this isn't. Both of these are good, but they suit completely different purposes. Um, so for my use, I can give it a clear thumbs up. Um, there's a link down below, um, AliExpress affiliate link, so you'll help me run the channel. You'll still pay the same. I'll get a small cut of it in order to help cover my channel expenses. Speaking about channel expenses, I also have memberships available down below. So if that's your kind of thing, please consider a membership. Also click the thumbs up button if you liked this video. If you didn't like the video and by any chance has watched this for, thumbs down button. Also, do consider subscribing. That's also a good indicator for me if you guys like my content or not. So that's it for now. Um, I'm going to do a lot of exciting things coming ahead. I'm even going to do a soda probably. And I'm going to say probably because it's a little bit weather dependent, but we'll see this coming weekend if there's a soda or not for me. If there is a soda and if the weather is good, there will be a video from that. So if you want to see that or any of my other videos, please do consider subscribing. And that's it for now. See you guys down the bands. See you in my next video, 73.